Ho ho and happy holidays everyone. This year is going to be a little bit different for this type of video because usually I cover things that are more Christmas related and well this episode is a little bit different. So I'm part of a discord group that is called the Honor Society where we talk about movies. Movies from the past to present, you know, all the nine realms of possibility. And so our group moderator had suggested that we do a Secret Santa thing where members of our Discord group would suggest movies for the other person to watch, and I was part of that. And I suggested a few to one particular person, I'm not gonna say who, because that would defeat the purpose. But my Secret Santa suggested a whole list of possibilities, but unfortunately, I had seen all of them. See, the thing is, is that I would have reviewed anything on that list if I had not already seen it. And part of the problem with it was that um, they were using my letterbox to figure out what I had not seen. But because my letterbox is so sparse and I rarely update that, they suggested a lot of the films that I'd already seen. So I came up with a solution to myself and I hope to my secret Santa that I, uh, that this is a good substitute. So there were some films that were on the list that were done by directors that, or studios that I had not seen, but, you know, were still on the list, right? So I chose the following. So on the list, there were two films in particular that, uh, that whose directors or studios have been on my watch list in my mind for a while, but I just never gotten to. On my Secret Santa's list, they had uh, The Grand Budapest Hotel by Wes Anderson. Unfortunately, I had already seen that movie, so I decided to watch Rushmore. And since we had a Studio Ghibli film, I decided to go with Whisper of the Heart instead of Princess Mononoke. I love Princess Mononoke, I've already seen it, but I don't want to review it for Letterboxd just to save face, so uh, I hope this is a good substitute. And hey, you also suggested, you know, uh, a film with Carrie Elways, this has Carrie Always as the Baron. So let's talk about these two movies. And I think we'll just start with what I just suggested, Whisper of the Heart. Whisper of the Heart is directed by Yushifumi Kondo, who had been most notably known for being in the art departments for various films like Princess Mononoke, as well as things like Howl's Movie Castle and Spirit Away. But he also was uh, a director. This was his third and final directed film before he passed away in, two, in 1998. I was going to say 2008 for some reason, but 1998. This movie stars uh, a girl at a school who is trying to write lyrics to a song, most notably a cover-ish version of John Denver's Take Me Home Country Road, which in both the dub and the sub, it's pretty much the same. But for this girl, she ends up finding out that there is this statue of this cat character, this Baron, and she decides to write a story for it. And so the film is basically a story about artists and trying to find uh, their passions deep down. And she also meets up with a boy who is very much into making violins. And so they both, you know, have a friendship that evolves over time. So this movie, is not necessarily one of my favorite Studio Ghibli films. It's beautifully animated. I love the music. It's a film that is so much of its own passion. There's one part in particular that I really liked about this movie where uh, the main character goes into the shop of uh, the antique store where you meet the Baron for the first time and she is given a geode by the shop owner. And he basically says that artists usually have to dig deep within themselves. Imagine the geode as yourself. And inside that geode, there are little crystals or little gems that you work through to get and then you polish over time. And I find that allegory to be very interesting and I really connected to it. Also, I love the part where like the main character is like, but what if all I find is a rock? <laughs> like, I find that really funny. <laughs> I, I really did find it funny. But for the most part, Whisper of the Heart, I did feel like it went a little bit too long. It's an hour and 50 minute movie and possibly could have saved itself a few minutes here and there because it did feel like it was dragging in certain places. But to be honest here, it's still a well-made movie. It's better than a lot of what modern Ghibli has been able to put out as of recently. Look at you, earwig. But for the most part, I really enjoyed Whisper of the Heart. Uh, it's a very fine movie. I don't know if I would watch it again, but I do think it's a pretty well done movie. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about it.
And then second up is Rushmore. As I said before, uh, this was a replacement for Grand Budapest Hotel. So let me talk about Grand Budapest Hotel real quick. Grand Budapest Hotel is one of Wes Anderson's best movies. It's much later in his career than what Rushmore was. Rushmore was Wes Anderson's second feature film following Bottle Rocket, but the Grand Budapest Hotel was a movie that pretty, ma pretty much encapsulates a lot of the tropes that we see a lot in Wes Anderson movies. The sort of static shots, the, uh, the colorization, the color palettes, the, the way things are framed, the use of music, you know, it's a culmination of a lot of that. But Rushmore was a very early movie in his development, and you can see a lot of his early sort of, uh, sort of mannerisms with the camera. The way he would use static, static, you know, shots to isolate characters or to isolate a moment. Uh, there isn't a lot of, like, colors that are really involved with this film. It basically follows a pretty decently standard three-act structure where the first act is in September, the second act is in October, and then the third act is in November slash December. It's not quite clear how all that really pans out. So the movie follows Max Fisher, played by Jason Schwartzman, who is a 15-year-old student at Rushmore, a private academy for rich people, and he becomes infatuated with a teacher who routinely doesn't like his advances. It's a movie that is kind of kind of creepy in that respect, but it's once he finds out that his former teacher friend, uh, played by Bill Murray, starts to go out on dates with said former teacher, uh, said teacher that Max Fisher wants to hang out with, he starts to have some sort of like a Dennis the Menace sort of rivalry with Bill Murray's character. And to, for the most part, I don't think Rushmore is that great of a movie. It's still good, don't get me wrong. A lot of the early stuff that would basically define Wes Anderson as a creator is there, but it's also very rough in certain areas. There are certain edits that kind of feel like a little bit amateurish, kind of feels a bit stilted, and it doesn't necessarily flow very well in terms of some parts, right? It's not necessarily terrible, it's just something from the early career that he would eventually kind of, you know, fix, fix later, right? For the most part, I do enjoy the performances here by Bill Murray and Matt and Jason Schwartzman and all the other cast members. They do a really good job. It's just the central idea of this movie, of this 15-year-old wanting to, you know, have relations with this, like, teacher that is older than him is very creepy and granted we still get things like licorice pizza today but it's like it's very weird and i know for a lot of people it's like you know oh but this is early wes anderson don't take it seriously but like again it still kind of creeps me out yes he's 15 years old but it's still a 15 year old wanting to go and you know have relations with the teacher it's very weird to me but it also encapsulates the weird horniness that some teenagers have, and it's gross. I, I just think it's gross. And you're supposed to empathize with this guy who, or, or you're supposed to like, you know, follow this guy around, and you're supposed to kind of empathize with him, but he's also kind of like a, a screw loose. He's a guy that is very much up his own ass about everything. And to that end, I don't know if the director really wanted you to follow him in a way that is supposed to be that, you know, that you're supposed to have empathy. I don't think you're supposed to, in my mind at least, because his actions towards adults is very inappropriate, especially to that teacher that he wants to hang out with. So, I mean, it's a very mixed bag for me. I know there are some friends of mine who really adore this movie, um, and fun fact about this movie, there's a scene in this movie that in film school I recreated with some friends. Now granted, I wasn't the one that suggested the scene because I had never seen it before. So uh, a good buddy of mine directed the scene and uh, we, we did it for a class project. So I guess that's a fun fact for you. Um, but yeah, you can ba basically pretty much tell that early Wes Anderson wasn't necessarily all there, but he had a lot of the same signature styles that would come to be more definitive with his directing style later on with things like, you know, Fantastic Mr. Fox and Grand Budapest Hotel. 
you know, this film had a lot more motion involved and it kind of felt smaller than a lot of his other films. And I think in that case, you know, it, it's like, it's fine. I really enjoyed it, but it's very small. It's a very small film and it's enjoyable for that sense. But at the same time, I don't quite like Max Fisher as a character. So yeah, those were my thoughts on the two films that my secret Santa replaced, I guess. I, I don't know how to really end this film or this video, but you know, these, these are the films that I got from Secret Santa and uh, I enjoyed both of them, but if I had to pick a winner, I'd say Whisper of the Heart is, is my favorite out of the two. As much as I wanna like Wes Anderson's films, I think Rushmore is not necessarily my favorite. So yeah. And uh, happy holidays to everyone that is watching this video. Uh, I'm really putting this together like the day before Christmas Eve. So uh, yeah, hope you guys have a nice holiday season. Uh, happy New Year. And hopefully next year I have some, uh, some actual ideas for videos. So see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.